What is the difference in between vitamin K1 and vitamin K2? And like, why are they so important for our health? Yeah. So the answer is science hasn't completely figured this out. So both forms, well, okay, let's start with vitamin K2 is not just one form. There's 13 different vitamin K2s. I think, I think if I'm remembering that correctly, there's only one type of vitamin K1. Um, but, uh, but so like vitamin K2, there's uh, menaquinone seven and menaquinone four, menaquinone two, all the way up to menaquinone 14. So there's like so many different types of vitamin K2. They have to do with like, there's a part of the molecule that repeats. So it's like how many repeats of it is what the two through two through 14 means. The important part here is vitamin K1 and vitamin K2 do all of the things in our body that vitamin K does like, like, uh, help us blood clot, uh, so that when we cut ourselves, we don't bleed forever. Uh, like controlling where calcium goes in our body, which helps to improve bone health and reduce risk of cardiovascular disease. So in terms of like in our bodies, K1 and K2 do the same thing. They don't seem to be absorbed at the same rates in our intestines. So for example, 90% of the vitamin K in the average human diet comes from vitamin K1. We get vitamin K1 from green vegetables, especially leafy greens, but about half of the vitamin K in our body is vitamin K2. We get vitamin K2 from foods like natto, from um, animal foods, so meat, seafood, uh, uh, dairy products, and our gut bacteria make vitamin K2. Um, so we get some vitamin K also from, from our gut bacteria as well. So about half of the vitamin K in our body is K1 versus K2, but 90% in our diet is. So that implies that there's some difference in how it's absorbed. And we have different forms of K1, uh, like the different ratio of K1 to K2 and different forms of K2 in different tissues. Uh, so I don't remember the specifics, like liver has more MK7, brain has more MK4. I, I don't know if that's actually, but that's, that's a, it's something like that. Like, I don't remember exactly which forms of K2 are in which tissues, but there is kind of like a different forms are found in different places. And it is unknown whether or not that's important, whether or not that actually, like there's a functional difference for that, right? Like why, what? we don't know yet, which is so cool that there's like this really basic thing about nutritional sciences that we still don't know. Um, the only other thing I think to know here is that the studies that have looked at vitamin K supplementation for improving bone mineral density in osteoporosis, so partially reversing osteoporosis, vitamin K2 forms have a better track record. So getting enough vitamin K from our diets helps to reduce risk of osteoporosis as well as bone fracture. If we're already dealing with a uh, bone, low bone mineral density, and we're taking a vitamin K supplement, uh, I'm, I forms of MK2, um, or forms of vitamin K, K2. So I'm pretty sure it's MK4 and MK7 are the ones that have the better track record. I'm actually going to just quickly double check that. Um, I have a whole section on the link between vitamin K and osteoporosis in my book. And I know I mentioned that in here. So let me just double check for accuracy. I'm glad I double checked because it is very specifically MK7, which has been uh, tested to uh, reduce loss of bone mineral density in postmenopausal women. Um, so MK7 is the one that has a good track record for osteopenia, osteoporosis. You also wanna make sure your vitamin D levels are checked and in the normal range there and also like work with a doctor because there might be some other dietary tweaks and lifestyle tweaks to happen there too. So uh, yes, not MK4 just MK7 for, for uh, osteoporosis.